How you doing, YouTube? Matt Massa Beer Reviews, back with a little bit of Homebrew Wednesday, courtesy of my boy Mark. Mark with a C. Um, he wrote me, uh, it wasn't too long ago, uh, a couple weeks ago, maybe. He said, hey man, love to send you off some Homebrew. I said, that would be pretty fantastic. And he sent off two. So I figured I'd do a side-by-side. -side. I usually don't do, do this with um, Homebrew stuff, but these are the exact same beers with just a different hop treatment. So we'll we'll dive into uh, Mark's letter here. It says inside the box, which these came out of, and I did the unboxing if you wanna go watch it. Um, you'll find two IPAs and a series that I do. Uh, the base beer remains consistent, malt bill, ABV, water treatment, yeast, and dry hop rates. But I switch up the hops out for each beer. So the bottle with the pink sticker, let's put that one over here, um, was brewed with Mosaic, Simcoe, and Columbus hops. So Mosaic, Simcoe, we have that little Columbus, little old school bittering. Um, and the bottle with no sticker on it was brewed with Strata Idaho 7. I think it's 7. It looks like a 1, but it's got to be 7. Uh, I should have did research beforehand and asked. Uh, Simcoe and Columbus. Okay, so you got Simcoe and Columbus are consistent across there. So you have that difference between Strata and Idaho 7 over here versus the uh, Mosaic over here. Uh, both uh, American uh, IPAs and have the same base and clock in at 6% uh, ABV. There you go. 6% ABV. Hazies, I assume. IPAs, they look hazy in a bottle. We'll see what's what. And uh, basically, you're looking, if my memory serves me correctly, let me keep that out here. Um, and uh, yeah, so Mosaic is a difference over here. The Strata and Idaho over here are the difference. So let's dive into these. No label, obviously. It's a, it's a homebrew, but we have a pink sticker, so that makes everything better. <laughs> So we'll see what's up. This is the Tuesday for uh, Christmas. I actually received these beers yesterday, but I do not have Homebrew Wednesday for tomorrow. So we open them now and we see what happens. That's how we roll. Um, so let's show those on the side. A little bit of framing. That's how, That one looks darker, right? I mean, I have little lights underneath these that kind of illuminate into the glass. Um, but they're consistent coloration wise those bulbs and these are exactly the same distance apart And this one just has a bit darker kind of vibe to it So that's kind of interesting to see that has a little bit bigger head But that could just be me pouring the beer a little bit differently uh, So kind of rich kind of like dark and peach juice over here a little bit more orange characteristics over there um, Darker than what you'd expect from your typical especially when you remove them from the light They actually have a, a decent amount of coloration difference um, So a little bit darker um, that we expect from a typical kind of um, commercial level hazy pale, but he called it an American pale ale, so I don't want to kind of assume that's what he's going for. Um, but it has that nice kind of old school IPA kind of look, you know, you're kind of um, Sierra Nevada pale, that kind of vibe to it, with the subtle haze to it. So let's go over here, dive into the mosaic version of the Simcoe and Columbus hot beer. Not a huge nose on it. It definitely comes off old school, though. It's a nice sweetness to them all. You can tell they're not throwing a ton of oats or any kind of like brewer sugar or anything like that in here. There's a, a nice, what is that? These are cold. I don't know why my beer fridge is this cold. I have it set at like 48. It feels like this is closer to 43. What is that? There's a cool orange characteristic, but the orange comes off slightly marmalady. It's not overly malty, but the malt is there. Like I said, it's not like a faux malt, something just sugar for the yeast to kind of run rampant through. It actually has this nice kind of elevated from like a Pilsen malt, but not necessarily as big as like Maris Hot or something along those lines. Too real, probably. And it just has this nice orange sickle without the lactose kind of vibe to it. If that makes any sense, that's why I went with like orange marmalade on it, but it smells pretty nice. I mean, it kind of makes sense when you're talking about having that kind of, I keep looking over here because I don't want to screw up and say the wrong shit, that mosaic on top of the Simcoe and Columbus. Now you're talking about Strata and Idaho 7 over here. It's a much more softer nose to it. Um, maybe even a little bit more spicy. Um, Idaho hops, Idaho 7 hops specifically, tend to come off a little bit spicy to me, almost like rye-like. So I'm getting a little bit of that on here. Again, not huge, but it definitely lacks that distinct orange component that that one over their head. And again, they smell almost lagered 
<laughs> in the sense that they smell clean. And you're like, how the fuck do you smell clean? Well, I don't know what to tell you. It just, there's no kind of muddledness to it. There's no overt kind of sweetness to it. It smells like it's fully attenuated. There's no flaws to it. There's a nice soft hot presence. It's not too in your face. I mean, you're talking about a 6% ABV American IPA. It's not going to be a two by four to the face to begin with. It smells quite nice. Let's dive in. Cheers. These are really cold. Why are these so cold? I kind of want them to warm up again a little bit. My, you know what it probably is? It'd be the opposite. It, it, like we're a couple days before uh, Christmas here. My my uh, on deck fridge. So I have like a fridge. Like everybody has a fridge and there's just a bunch of beer in it. But then I have this small kind of beverage cooler. Um, this guy I call my on deck fridge. It's kind of like one of those Danby, you know, 200 can kind of cooler things that everybody has. And that thing stays at a locked, like, 46, 48 degrees is where I like my beers to go. It just these, I feel like these are closer to 42, 43. That's better. That's really well made, dude. I mean, it's not explosive. Um, there is this graininess to the malt. It seems something almost coffee-like. I know that sounds kind of odd. But there's this roast component to the grain that comes off a little toasty kind of coffee, like not a negative, I mean, shut your imagination. Just not something I typically get in kind of an IPA. The hot presence is there. It's again, not two by four to the face. I get this nice soft tea, like candy bittering. That little bit of citrus in the nose follows through, but I thought it'd be a little bit bigger actually in a taste. Done, done. Epically clean, well made. There's nothing negative to the beer whatsoever. Just classic IPA. Again, I, I went into this with a kind of just knee-jerk reaction of okay let's dive into some hazies in the grand scheme of things i guess you would call that a hazy that's not what these beers are nor what they're intended to be this is kind of like new school hopping with old school technique and i kind of dig it super drinkable um in a perfect world uh, you know what i mean I, I i who doesn't want a little bit more hop expression i think it would be a little bit more vibrant on the hop bring out a little bit of that orange maybe even a little bit of that herbalness get it closer to kind of esb territory something about that something in that range i mean and um but it's nice it's tasty drinkable and like i said the cool thing about it there's nothing negative to the beer whatsoever it just has this kind of softness to it and a beer side that you typically expect a little bit more aggressiveness that would probably be my biggest nitpick on that one over there this sucker cheers Yeah. I mean, I really do think it's at Idaho 7 over here, really driving the bus, because there is this spicy component that's infinitely more elevated on the beer over here. It just has this almost Y-like component to it. And, and, and I get that a lot when um, Idaho 7 is involved. I like it. It just kind of, it's like a rye IPA without the super rye-ness, if that makes any sense. The mouthfeel, and I haven't really talked about it. The mouthfeel on both of these are really, really cool. And he actually talks about the, the similarities between a bill, and he actually goes to mention malt bill, ABV, water treatment, and yeast. And a lot of, I mean, not that homebrewers don't focus on water treatment, but I think really the one of the kind of secret fantasticalness things when it comes to beer in general, more specifically kind of mid uh, ipas across the board but that kind of five to eight percent range is your water treatment um doing getting um your water levels to way you want them to be i think is what separates a lot of the haves from the have-nots when it comes to really good kind of ipas I and mean, these have that softness that is kind of erring towards that super water nerdiness i call it a call in those commercial beers it's not that sultry super soft kind of craziness but it has that thing going for it which is nice we get one more sip over here we'll go back and forth yeah i mean the orange thing in the nose here isn't nearly as big in the taste but it's there not here at all so it has to be that mosaic i play the strata and really the idaho seven i think is driving the bus here and it's just kind of spicy component on top of already kind of herbally hop kind of going on these are fun beers they're not going to light the world on fire for the new school haze bro um, but again i don't think that is what they're they're meant to be um they're meant to be a new school hopped 
traditionally born because I don't want to call them traditional kind of like when I say traditional IPA I mean like you know your Torpedo your Sierra Nevada that kind of beer it's not that beer but the base concepts on which they're brewed I believe that's kind of where his brewing technique kind of evolves um, from but has that kind of new school kind of flair to it when it comes to the hops it makes for really tasty beer I mean, you give me this in a, 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 as an IPA, as off a shelf, and you and you dictate that mindset. You know, you can't be like, here's an IPA, and just write big IPA in a can. People buy it, they'll go, well, uh, this is not IPA. What people are used to, if you if you smartly label this beer as an homage to old school with new school hops, I think when you set a mindset like that and i wasn't set at that mindset coming into this it's something i work towards actually drinking a beer i think it ends up being a much more kind of in tune a much more kind of purposeful in a very fun way going from this to this that orange really does pop one more step on this A little bit of spicy bitterness. Got to do the kuvi. Doesn't matter if it's homebrew or not. Call it blasphemy, but that's what we do when we do side by sides. If I remember half the time, I fucking forget to do it. Let's see how this is gonna go. I think they're better separate. Let's put it that way. Yeah, they're better separate. Because what you end up with is not as spicy and tannic, and not as orangey. So I think that, and, and, and we're talking about small differences here. We're not talking huge differences, like 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 two by four to the face. It's apparent, but not that apparent. So when you kind of do this, you retain that mouthfeel. And the, the malt obviously stays the same. It's the same malt bill, the whole nine. But it's just when you go back and forth between these two, it's much better than drinking them together. But still, a fun little um, fun little journey, a fun little side by side. I rarely get to do these kind of a uh, homebrew side by side, so I appreciate it, Mark. Mark with the C. I want to keep saying that because I worked with the Mark with C, and it's kind of important. It's like Matt with one T. So there you go. Uh, so there you go. Nothing else. It's homebrew. We don't rate it. We don't talk about it. Is the best. Is what it is. It's tasty beer, and I'm really glad that um, that I got to try it. Uh, I'm not gonna do this. I debated on doing this, and I just thought it would be unfair. Um, or not unfair, but a cop out, not even a cop. I don't know what the word is, but so I'm going to do my, this Sunday, I'm going to do live. I'm going to do my massive beer awards, which is I'm going to do probably, well, I'm definitely going to do my top 20 beers of the year. I think I might do a different list too. I was only going to do two, which is shelfies and my best of, I think I might throw another one in there. I was toying with the idea to make my favorite beer of the year was all the homebrew that I was sent because I've got to send a lot of homebrew this year, but I really wanted to keep homebrew separate from commercial. I just, for those reasons, I don't want to, I don't want to merge those two worlds together. So I'm not going to do that. So I figured I'd call it out here because in all practicality, this will probably be the last homebrew Wednesday that you guys see this year. There might be one next week because I know I'm getting some homebrew in the mail. Depends on when I get it. Depends on when I drink it. With the holidays and shipping schedules, it's going to be really difficult. But we'll see what's what. Um, but I just want to thank the amount of fucking homebrew I got this year. I started, I was like, I want to do homebrew Wednesday. People send me homebrew and, you know, it's not like I've done it every single Wednesday. But I've had so many people send me homebrew this year. It's amazing. And it's amazing that you'd even send it to me. That's the amazing part because it's, you know, I'm some fucking, you know, a talking head on the internet that just says fucking wild shit every now and then and is rationally overconfident and fucking often wrong. And, uh, and for people who homebrew, I know how personal it is. I know how important it is for you to make great, good beer, but... Uh, it's hard to have somebody kind of talk about your beer with no filter. And that's what I try to do. Like when I do homebrews, I'm not trying to be nice. I never try to be nice just for the sake of being nice. I don't want to shit all over somebody's fucking, you know, donut. You know what I mean? I just don't want to do that. That's not my purpose. But, you know, one of the biggest, I guess you say, issues with the homebrewers is that their friends and family yes them to death. Oh, it's great. Oh, it's fantastic. Oh, it's whatever. So, you know, a lot of times when the home somebody sends me homebrew, I take it infinitely seriously because I, I'm not a BJCP judge. I'm not certified in anything. I just talk about what I like and what I don't like. So in and of itself, people sending me beer is fantastic. But it's also, I'm talking uh, uh, about something that I think the 
feedback I give, I think, is a little more important than a lot of the f- professional commercial stuff that I do. So, And I just appreciate the fact that people send that beer off. I just want to mention it here if we don't end up with a uh, end-of-year kind of homebrew thing um, and just get that in. So thank you very much, Mark, for sending this off. Thank you very much for everybody that sent off homebrew this year from the uh, Gilded Skull Guys, Time Materials, Jonathan Brewster Ales, um, and I'm forgetting other people because I'm a douche, my buddy Lou Brew. Um, there's a ton of people that have sent me uh, Brew Lahan. There's a ton of people that have sent me homebrew th- this year, and I am grateful. So thank you very much, guys, for not just sending me beer, but trusting me to be a some kind of informational receptacle of words that never end. So we're going to cut it off there. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the homebrew review. If you want to send me some off, reach out to me, Matt at MassiveBeers.com or MassiveBeers at Gmail.com. Down there if you want to talk about it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully see you next time. Cheers. Oh.